Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today is a really fun day because I've been asked to be part of the Waffle Flower 5th Anniversary Blog Hop. And we are going to make these adorable cards using waffle flower stamps and dies. And this video is kind of special because it's a twofer. We're going to start off actually with a review of a product that a lot of people have been asking me about lately because I've been using it in videos for a while. And I also want to remind you that before you go, make sure you check out the video description so you can check out the other talented crafters that are taking part in this blog hop and be inspired by their channels as well. And there's also going to be some giveaways sprinkled around, so I want to make sure you don't miss out on a chance to win and a chance to be inspired because that's a great thing about YouTube videos. Uh, everyone can share ideas and then we can all get inspiration from them. So if you have followed my channel for the last six months or so, you've probably um, seen my watercolor reviews and you have seen these swatches that I've been making. And and um, these are from some stamps that are from Waffle Flower. And when I saw this set come out, I was like, wow, this is amazing. In fact, they do color wheels. I've got a color wheel here stuck to my wall that I made with one of their stamp sets. Um, it's just very innovative and it just keeps everything organized, neat. And when you swatch your materials, you can see what they really look like because they look different than they do in the pans, you know, with watercolors and with pencils and markers and things like that. So when I went to make these cards, I knew I wanted to um, kind of use some fashion colors. And I'd also, just the other day, gotten this set of 60 watercolors from Arteza. And I was swatching them and I realized that the colors on the, um, on the tubes don't really match what's in the tubes. So I wanted to swatch them in a way that I could actually put the colors on the tubes. So what I did was I stamped my swatching stamp from Waffle Flower on some watercolor paper. Then I put some score tape on the back and I ran it through my die cutter with the dies that coordinate with the set. And I made these little stickers. So all I had to do was paint my swatch on the sticker and then stick it down to the tubes. And that worked really well. So then when I went to pick my colors from this card, uh, what I did was I looked at the colors and I put them together kind of like you would paint chips at a paint store and I chose the ones that I thought looked really nice together and then I knew I was just I just wanted to do basic cardstock not pattern paper so I did all my coloring and then I just grabbed some cardstock to match and use my dies and my stamps for embellishment so it keeps the cost of your cards down um, and the postage down because everything's lightweight and paper and then you really get the most bang for your buck from your stamps and dies so I thought I would share that with you um, again, further on in the video, after I'm done the review on the media mat, you'll see a tutorial for this, so you can uh, skip ahead if that's all you're interested in. But a lot of people have asked me about this media mat. And um, I've been using it since December. They sent it to me to review and kind of get some feedback on. And um, I've been using it a lot. And people have spied it in my videos and have asked me about it. And now I can finally give you a full review and um, and you can purchase it if you like it. Now, I do want to be up with uh, the fact that they gave this to me. I didn't purchase it myself. And um, it retails for $36. I'm not sure if they're going to have any sales with this being the fifth anniversary week. Um, but maybe. I'm not sure. They might have some giveaways. I'm not sure on that. But it is $36. So it is a bit of an investment. That said, I've been using it nearly daily for the past four months. And it's really been wonderful. So um, I just want to kind of give you the rundown. The mat I would say is about 12 inches by 16 inches. The um, It's got an outer border that's thicker. I'd say the interior is probably about a 16th of an inch. This is probably, I would say maybe 3 16th of an inch on the border. The wells are about an eighth of an inch deep and there there's like a lip that's above even the thickness of the edge. So you get a fairly deep well there. They're sized so that you can stick a ink cube in there and then you can use that to make a watercolor palette. So that way, if you just want to get an occasional look of watercolor on your cards, you don't have to buy a watercolor set. You can just use your inks and it works out really conveniently. And the other thing is that, um, as long as you're not as messy as I am, if you have to set something down, you know, the, the ridges on there will keep it from getting a bunch of junk all over the back of your project if you accidentally set it on top of there, which I like. The other thing is that the surface of this is not shiny, um, which is really handy if you like to photograph your work, if you're a um, YouTuber like I am, or you do any sort of social media where you like to share your work and you're photographing it, the only time you're going to see like a glare is on water. Um, you're not going to see it on this matte surface. And because the surface is matte, you can 
press your ink on there. You can scribble out a water-based marker and it's not going to bead up on you. So it's so easy to use the mediums that you already have and make a watercolor palette. Like in your standard Teflon or silicone mats, um, like this one here, I love this mat too, but it's so shiny, it can, the glare can be distracting. And if you go and you try to scribble some material down there, um, it beads up on you. So you might kind of lose track of where you've scribbled out or pressed your ink down and then you set your arm or your card in it. And that can be um, quite a bummer if you've spent a lot of time on a project. So I just wanted to kind of show you that as well. Something I didn't realize um, until I went online, because these are now available for pre-order, is that there, there are markings on here, and these markings are for YouTubers to help frame up their camera. So if you need a glare-free surface to work on, uh, that can help you. I'm just going to set this here because the camera is making everything dark because of how bright white the mat is. And there's also some markings for a square. So if you're trying to get like a photo for Instagram, there's... Um, little markings here to show you where the square would be. Now this area in here that's got the ridge, it is about, um, actually it's just a little bit over 9 by 12, so it's going to fit most of your standard watercolor papers, bristols, cardstocks, all of that stuff right in here uh, without, so if you do get a little messy it shouldn't go anywhere. Um, and I think that would be really handy for most of your mixed media applications. This doesn't skid, so this is on my shiny table, it's like a gloss varnish surface, wooden surface. If I push on this it's not going to move on me, so that's that's really handy, especially if you are doing videos, um, your stuff's not going to move out of frame. But even for the average crafter, like me, I'm on this small table in my office, uh, I don't have a lot of room to work, so knowing that I can put my project down here, it's not going to slide around on me when I'm working, and also having this sitting here gives me like a footprint where I know this is where I'm working, and I'm not going to like set my stuff down on top of this, I can keep it kind of cleared off. So. And those are the pros. Uh, hot glue, you could use hot glue on here, you can put a dab of hot glue and like arrange things on it to make an embellishment, let it dry and then peel it right up and glue it onto your project, which is really handy. Um, if you spill any glue or paint on here, you can peel it off or wash it off easily. And if you want to like get a bunch of um, adhesive tabs or foam squares or something ready in advance, you can stick them down onto the surface so they don't get stuck on your other things and then peel them up as you need them because they'll they'll release off of this non-stick surface. Um, the back side is glossy which helps it grip to your table uh, and it also picks up all kinds of other stuff. So now we're going to get into the negatives. Um, it has a lot of positive attributes but uh, the negatives. So first, you know, it is a little expensive. So $36 for an area just for something to keep your workspace clean. Um, maybe a bit pricey. The fact that it's matte, it reduces eye strain, is really worthwhile, but you kind of have to ask yourself how worth it is that to you. Um, the other downside is that because it is so grippy, it grips some things you don't want it to, such as embossing powder, glitter, cat hair, uh, any sort of dust. <laughs> um, I was working with graphite powder a couple weeks ago, and I, and I didn't have this anywhere near my table, and I cleaned my table when I was done, but lo and behold, if there was graphite powder in the air, if it was anywhere, it was finding its way onto this mat, and I then I went to wipe it off, and I just had black streaks all over it because of that graphite powder. Also, pastel powder, if you do pastel artwork, any of that dusty stuff is going to grab your mat. It's not a huge deal because you can um, go clean it in a, you know, a bin of soapy water, but it is kind of a bummer if you just want to spray it down and wipe it off. It's going to be so hard to get the embossing powder and, and pastel off. So, even though this is a non-stick surface and heat resistant surface so you could do your embossing and whatnot on it those loose um the loose powder you know uh, the loose granules of powder and glitter and stuff are going to cling to this and be very difficult to remove unless you dunk it in your sink so there's that the other downside is that it does stain. It doesn't bother me, but I know um, I know a lot of people are more particular than I am about how their supplies look. And and in fact, I'm going to go wash this and come back, and we'll see how much of this I was able to get off of my mat. Even though I hate to, I generally wouldn't at this stage. I would use up the rest of that material before I would wash it, but I only squirted out tiny little bits of paint, so um, so I'm not losing that much. But I mean, I have washed. This. I've got. Um, stains from ink, from gouache, from watercolor, uh, and not even alcohol ink, just like water-based ink. Because these products contain dyes, um, they can stain, especially something that's white like this. So I'm going to go try to get this as clean as I can, and then, uh, then I'll come back here and show you how I was able to clean it. 
Okay, I've washed and dried this and um, it's clean, although you can still see some stains. Like I mentioned before, uh, this marker that I just put on there when I was talking to you a couple minutes ago, that stained really badly. I washed it in warm water and dish soap and then I used um, a toothbrush with a bar of lava soap and tried to get in here and get all the, the grime out of there. And it's clean, it's just as you can see there's some stains. Um, I also tried a magic eraser because I wasn't sure if that might bring it back to bright white, but um, it didn't really work. I don't know if it's like impregnated into the silicone, but um, it might probably probably lighten up as you know I use it and wash it more and it fades and whatnot. But obviously it's not brand new bright white, but I've been using it for four months. So I just wanted to put that out there because I know um, many of you guys are meticulous with your tools and you have everything looking like new all the time and you take great care to clean everything up really well. Um, I tend to put my paints out and start a project and if there's paint left, I just leave it and I come back to it the next day and use up the scraps either with some brush stroke practicing or I'll use it to make another card or I don't like to just wash away paint and waste it. Um, so leaving stuff setting on this white surface does make it more prone to staining and some colors just stain really bad even if they've only been on there a few minutes. Um, also don't use this as a cutting surface this will, this is silicone and you will ruin it. I ruined a Silpat baking mat once because I cut on it. Um, so you don't want to do that. So keep the sharp stuff away from it. Um, and that's pretty much it. I really like it. It's been one of my most used tools since I got it. And I recommend it. But it is a little expensive and it does stain. So that's pretty much the downsides. And it will pick up every stray bit of dust, cat hair, glitter in your craft room. So, you know, just kind of try to, try to keep that away from those types of things. Things. And um, then that's that for that review. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I will uh, answer them to the best of my abilities. Uh, so now, without further ado, let's go on to the tutorial to make these cards. For my project, I decided to use the We Heard stamp set and die set from Waffle Flower. This is a fairly new set and it's really fun for birthday parties, um, especially if you have to give a card from a bunch of people like at the office, but it's so fun and cute it would be a applicable for kids parties as well. Now I mentioned my swatching tip there with the uh, tubes of watercolor paint. Um, I'm keeping this set in the tubes because there's so many colors, but I like this because I can kind of um, hold the tubes next to each other and see what colors are going to look nice. And then I'm just putting very tiny dots of color onto my waffle flower media mat. Um, watercolor goes such a long way and when you're using it from the tubes, you're going to have way more than you, uh, than you realize. So I just put the smallest amount that I could. And you can also mix the colors that you chose for new colors, which is really handy in making everything match and look really coordinated. I'm using a number two round to go ahead and paint these balloons and hats and other fun things in the set. And um, I want to tell you something about the uh, this set. You can get it with dies or you can buy the dies separately, but if you buy it in a combo, you do save a little bit of money. And I thought it would be fun to have the dies for, th for this set because the bottom of the, um, the animal section is open so with my skin and cut it wouldn't really cut very well unless I made a line there to cut it but also with all the different balloon stamps and shapes I figured I would use that part of the set for a lot of other things and having um, the dies for that would be really handy for cutting out little scraps of paper uh, when I want to make a card or want to make confetti for um, a shaker or I just want to decorate a gift bag or something so I figured I would use the dies on its own a lot so it would be worthwhile to have. Um, I wanted to make a more kind of neutral skin tone, so I went with that magenta, but I added some yellow ochre uh, and some coral to it, and that gave me a really nice color. And then I did add a kind of like a taupe color to the mix because I needed something a little more neutral for the bunnies and the sheep. I did go ahead and darken it with some of the other colors there. If you mix opposites, you can make a um, you can make a gray. So if I took the orangey peach color and the blue, I can make a darker gray to add to those colors for shadows. And then I just very lightly use those same colors to go over the sentiment, which I'll die cut later. I decided I wanted to use a bunch of fun colorful cardstock for this project because um, I'll probably end up using this for a um, birthday card for a child. And I took the A2 layering dies, which is a, a die cut set from Waffle Flower that cuts um, nested rectangles that are very close in size um, to fit and mat on an A2 card perfectly. And you may think, well, I'll just use a paper cutter for that. And that's totally fine. But one of the cool things you can do with a set like this is to cut frames. So I used every other, um, or I used three different, actually four different rectangles, but I used 
like alternating ones. I didn't use ones right next to each other. I skipped one in between and I arranged them kind of higgledy wiggledy on my cardstock and I cut out each of those colors, each of the, um, the three colors there. And then I cut a white panel for the middle and you don't have to have them lined up the exact same way every time you cut it. All you, it doesn't matter because the outside frame is going to fit whatever the inside frame from the previous one is, as long as you use the same size dies. So I just mixed and matched them and made this really cool inlaid panel for the inside. And the neat thing about it being inlaid is that it doesn't add a lot of bulk. It just adds a bulk of one sheet of cardstock. So it's going to save you postage and it's going to fold nice and flat in an envelope. So now I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with my card. And I decided that I wanted to have lime green on each of the center panels here. I think it's really fun and it's a nice um, mid-tone color that is going to set off the really pale animals, but also um, be a nice bridge to the deeper tone cardstock I used. Now I had some leftovers of those frames. So I decided I would use one of those on top of my panel and I would do the building of my scene within that frame just to give it kind of like a funky look because I purposely cut them like cattywampus so they would be um they would be really fun. Like, you know, it's like a party. You got a party of sheep there. I wanted to have that fun party atmosphere. And it also kind of reminds me of like the 80s. If you're a, a kid from the 80s, you know, like just kind of those wonky shapes. And I just thought it was fun. And then I used foam squares to put the sentiment down and overlap an ink smudge that I accidentally got when I was stamping. I don't like to restamp something and waste paper. So I try to uh, use that as an opportunity for embellishment. Now this die cut is really cute. It's, it was only $6 and it makes a three-dimensional bow. Um, so my, my cardstock, I was using a double-sided cardstock that had a white core and um, I wanted to avoid the cracking, which I thought I was going to do with by curling it with my marker, but I did get a little cracking. So to fix that, I simply took some of my watercolor and I went over the cracks in the cardstock and filled it in. And then I got to thinking that there are some spots where I didn't line my diet very well and also a little spot in between the sheep that uh, cut out from the background color, the watercolor paper. And I thought, you know, I can dye that to match my backing paper. So that's what I did. So if your die cutting isn't perfect, use your watercolors and just dye it to the color that you need. Um, so there's my little tip. Most of my tips come from making mistakes, quite frankly, but we all make them and who wants to recut and restamp and recolor a whole thing, right? Um, these bows were adorable. I used that on one of the sheep because I thought it would be cute for the sheep to have a bow. And then um, I embellished the some of the other sheep with the cute party hats from the kit. I also added a bunch of balloons that I watercolored and then just used a black pen to draw some strings down to the sheep's hands. So it looks like they're carrying the balloons at the party. I thought this was a really uh, cute and fun card and it would be really delightful for anyone of any age really to receive. Now the other group of animals that came in the We Heard stamp set are these adorable bunnies. And um, there's actually a collar and I think the collar is meant for the sheep, but when you put it on the bunnies, it looks like they have little belly shirts on. And I think that is just the coolest thing. It's so cute. Again, reminds me of the eighties. And um, I just added that to a couple of the bunnies cause it just, I think it looks, it looks so cute when you put like animals in clothing, not in real life because they don't care for that, but in stamps, yeah, totally. And I also had cut some of the balloons out from some scrap cardstock and decided to use those in the cards as well. Um, I was just planning on decorating the insides with the cardstock, but I thought it looked better when I alternated the cardstock and some of the stamped images. So um, anytime you have those little slivers and scraps of cardstock left over from cards, go ahead and die cut a few extra things, punch a few things, and you'll see that you can use those as embellishments. You may have some left over that you don't end up using, but um, it's better to have them and not need them. And then for this one, I just did the rest of my stamped ones that I had left over because I like the look of the stamped ones on this card a little bit better. You can find all these products at wafflefrotflower.com. I'll have them linked in the video description as well as a list of the other crafters that are taking part in the blog hop today. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.